Definition of Obstructive Sleep Apnea Obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, is a sleep disorder characterized by repeated episodes of complete or partial obstruction of the upper airway during sleep, resulting in intermittent hypoxemia and arousals from sleep. It is a common disorder affecting approximately 25% of men and 10% of women, with increasing prevalence in older age groups and individuals with obesity. OSA is associated with a wide range of comorbidities, including hypertension, cardiovascular disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. B. Prevalence and significance of obstructive sleep apnea in perioperative settings. OSA is increasingly recognized as an important factor in perioperative care. Patients with OSA have an increased risk of complications, including respiratory failure, cardiovascular events, and delayed recovery from anesthesia. The prevalence of OSA among surgical patients is estimated to be as high as 50%, making it a significant concern for anesthesiologists and perioperative care teams. The identification and management of OSA in the perioperative period are therefore critical for improving patient outcomes and reducing the burden of postoperative complications. C. Objectives of the presentation. The objectives of this presentation are to provide an overview of the pathophysiology of OSA, to discuss the challenges and strategies for perianesthesia management of OSA, and to highlight the implications for clinical practice. The presentation will cover key topics related to preoperative evaluation and screening, anesthetic considerations, and postoperative management, as well as the multidisciplinary approach to perioperative care in patients with OSA. Physiology of Obstructive Sleep Apnea A. Mechanisms of Obstructive Sleep Apnea The mechanisms of OSA involve the partial or complete obstruction of the upper airway during sleep, resulting in recurrent episodes of hypoxia and hypercapnia. The upper airway obstruction occurs due to a combination of factors, including increased upper airway resistance, impaired neuromuscular control, and decreased upper airway tone. These factors can be exacerbated by underlying comorbidities such as obesity, smoking, and alcohol use, which further increase the risk of upper airway collapse and subsequent apneic events. B. Pathophysiology of Obstructive Sleep Apnea The pathophysiology of OSA is multifactorial and involves both structural and functional abnormalities of the upper airway. Structural abnormalities include narrowed pharyngeal airway dimensions, increased soft tissue volume, and enlarged tonsils or adenoids. Functional abnormalities include impaired neuromuscular control of the upper airway muscles, decreased upper airway tone, and changes in respiratory drive. These abnormalities result in increased upper airway resistance and collapse during sleep, leading to intermittent hypoxia and arousals from sleep. C. Clinical manifestations of obstructive sleep apnea. The clinical manifestations of OSA can vary widely and may include loud snoring, witnessed apneic events, excessive daytime sleepiness, morning headaches, and mood disturbances. Patients with OSA may also experience cognitive dysfunction, impaired work performance, and an increased risk of motor vehicle accidents. The severity of OSA is typically assessed using the Apnea Hypopnea Index, AHI, which quantifies the frequency and duration of apneic and hypopneic events during sleep. AHI values greater than 15 are considered indicative of moderate to severe OSA. Perianesthesia Management of Obstructive Sleep Apnea A. Preoperative Evaluation and Screening. The preoperative evaluation and screening of patients with OSA should be performed to identify the severity of OSA and assess the risk of perioperative complications. The evaluation should include a detailed medical history, physical examination, and assessment of OSA severity using the AHI. Patients with moderate to severe OSA may require further evaluation with polysomnography or other sleep studies. Additional evaluations may include assessment of cardiovascular risk factors, airway anatomy, and comorbidities such as obesity or diabetes. b. Anesthetic considerations, choice of anesthetic agents. The choice of anesthetic agents should be based on the patient's medical history, comorbidities, and severity of OSA. Some anesthetic agents, such as propofol and opioids, can exacerbate respiratory depression and increase the risk of apnea in patients with OSA. Therefore, alternative agents such as regional anesthesia, non-opioid analgesics, and short-acting agents may be preferred. Airway management is a critical aspect of perioperative care in patients with OSA. The use of continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP, or bilevel positive airway pressure, BiPAP, may be necessary during anesthesia to prevent upper airway collapse and maintain adequate oxygenation. In cases where CPAP or BiPAP is not feasible, 
other airway management techniques such as awake fiber optic intubation, laryngeal mask airway, or endotracheal intubation may be required. C. Postoperative management, monitoring. Postoperative monitoring of patients with OSA should focus on airway patent C, oxygenation, and respiratory function. Continuous pulse oximetry monitoring and capnography may be used to assess oxygenation and ventilation, respectively. Close monitoring of respiratory rate and depth is also important to detect signs of respiratory distress or failure. Analgesia. 1. The use of opioids for pain management in patients with OSA should be minimized, as opioids can exacerbate respiratory depression and increase the risk of apnea. Point 2. Alternative pain management strategies such as regional anesthesia, non-opioid analgesics, or patient-controlled analgesia may be preferred. Early mobilization. 1. Early mobilization of patients with OSA is important to minimize the risk of postoperative complications such as atelectasis, pneumonia, and deep vein thrombosis. 2. Ambulation and deep breathing exercises should be encouraged as soon as possible after surgery, with the use of supplemental oxygen as needed. Challenges and strategies for perianesthesia management of obstructive sleep apnea. A. Challenges. Difficulty in airway management. Patients with OSA have a higher risk of difficult airway management due to their underlying upper airway obstruction, making intubation and ventilation challenging. Increased risk of complications. Patients with OSA are at an increased risk of perioperative complications, including respiratory failure, cardiovascular events, and prolonged hospitalization. Delayed recovery. Patients with OSA may experience delayed recovery from anesthesia due to the effects of opioids and other anesthetic agents on their respiratory function. B. Strategies. Multidisciplinary approach. A multidisciplinary approach involving anesthesia, sleep medicine, and respiratory therapy can improve perioperative management of OSA. Collaboration between these specialties can facilitate preoperative evaluation and optimization, as well as postoperative monitoring and management. Use of non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. The use of non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, NIPPV, can improve respiratory function and reduce the risk of complications in patients with OSA. 1. NIPPV can be used preoperatively, intraoperatively, and postoperatively to maintain upper airway patency and oxygenation. Point 2. Postoperative monitoring. Close postoperative monitoring of patients with OSA is essential to detect and manage complications early. 3. Continuous pulse oximetry monitoring, capnography, and respiratory rate monitoring can help identify signs of respiratory distress or failure. 4. Early intervention with supplemental oxygen, NIPPV, or other airway management techniques may be necessary to prevent complications. 5. Overall, a comprehensive approach to perioperative management of OSA should include preoperative evaluation and optimization, careful selection of anesthetic agents and airway management techniques, postoperative monitoring, and early intervention for complications. 6. Collaboration between anesthesia, sleep medicine, and respiratory therapy can help optimize outcomes and minimize the risk of complications. Thanks for watching.